thank you so much for attending and uh, I'll let you talk. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, letting me do the morning brew. I'm really excited to talk to you all about um, our organization, Colorado Dragon Boat. Um, so I'll just go into a little bit of detail of who I am. Um, so again, my name is Sarah Moore. I'm the executive director for the nonprofit Colorado Dragon Boat. Um, we're a nonprofit that hosts the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, um, the Colorado Dragon Film Festival, and the Emerging Leaders Program. Um, so I am actually originally from Michigan. Um, I moved out to Colorado Denver area in uh, 2012, um, and I mainly came out here because um, I love the outdoors, um, and I also am very into rock climbing. Um, and there is a lot of rock climbing here in Colorado um, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, that's actually a photo of me rock climbing. I mean, not in Colorado, that's actually in Utah, um, ironically, but um, ample amounts of rock climbing out here. Um, but when I first moved out here, um, my undergrad was in allied health sciences and biology, so not really anything to do with nonprofits, um, but I did kind of stumble into nonprofits. Um, I actually started in um, Boy Scouts of America in 2012 to 2017, um, and then once the um, position for executive director opened up at Colorado Dragon Boat, um, I applied for that. Um, and the reason why I applied for that is I actually have uh, two photos here. Um, one is with my great grandparents, um, Kaiichi and Etsu Suzuki. Um, and then in the middle is my uh, grandfather when he was a kid, Masamichi Suzuki, Mac for short. Um, and then if you look over at the other photo, those are my grandparents, um, Masamichi Suzuki and Wilma Zoe Green. Um, so my grandfather was a Nisei um, during the World War II era. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but um, Nisei, uh, Ni means two in Japanese. Um, so he was second generation Japanese, first generation Japanese American. So he was born here in the US. Um, he was an American citizen. And during World War II, um, there was an executive order 9066 um, that did collect anybody of Japanese ancestry and put them in internment camps or in incarceration camps um, during World War II. Um, that included my grandfather. He was um, taken out of his third year of med school and put into an um, internment camp up in uh, Tule Lake, which is actually Northern California. California. Um, but he actually was able to leave the internment camp in early um, and finish his medical degree um, in Michigan and then afterwards joined the military and um, served on what was called the ABCC, which is the Atomic Bomb Casualty Commission, um, where he went over to Japan and studied uh, fertility and victims of the atomic bombs. Um, and that's actually where he met my grandmother, who was a nurse um, who went over to Japan with the army and then um, they fell in love came back, tried getting married. Um, they went to Las Vegas to get married of all places and they were um, denied actually uh, marriage because they're interracial. Um, and this was back in the, the 50s. Um, but uh, Vegas fall places uh, wouldn't let them get married, but that didn't stop them. They did go to um, California and they got married. That photo actually is of their wedding day, um, which is pretty cute. Um, but I kind of just talk about this because uh, they're a hu huge influence in my life. Um, they have definitely inspired me to um, really promote um, diversity and culture. I think that is very important. Um, and that's probably one of the main reasons why I fell in love with the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival when I first came here um, to Colorado because it is one of the biggest cultural events in um, the state. And I think it's really important that we celebrate um, and educate people on the vast uh, cultural um, diversity here in Colorado um, that makes up our, our state. Um, so I'll just go uh, into a little bit of detail on um, our 501c3 nonprofit, uh, Colorado Dragon Boat. So the mission of the Colorado Dragon Boat is to build bridges of awareness, knowledge, and understanding between the diverse Asian Pacific American communities and the general public through cultural education, leadership development, and athletic competition. Um, and our vision is to be, re be recognized as the premier organization celebrating and promoting um, the culture and contributions and accomplishments of the APA communities here in Colorado. Um, so our organization has been around for 20 years. This is actually our 20th year, 20th anniversary. Um, and I do think that we have been accomplishing both our mission and, and vision statement. Uh, most people know uh, what the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival is. Um, we actually have quite a few people from out of state come. Um, we've actually had international um, attendees as well 
well. Um, we're definitely making a name for ourselves with the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival. Um, but recently we have um, kind of updated and we have uh, two new programs as well. We also have the Colorado Dragon Film Festival and the AAPI Emerging Leaders Program. And I'll kind of go into detail into those a little bit later. But um, right now I will talk more about um, our uh, bread and butter festival, which is the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, or CDBF um, for short. So we actually started, like I said, we're 20 years old. We started back in 2001, um, was the first Colorado Dragon Boat Festival. And we started because uh, we have three founders, Ding Wen Su, Howie Solo, and John Chin. Um, these three came together um, back in 1999, um, which oh, sounds like so long ago, not even 2000s, but 1999. Um, and they came together because uh, they realized that here in Colorado, and I'm sure as, as most of you um, can, can tell, Colorado is not necessarily the most diverse um, state that you can, can be in. Um, walking outside, you might not see as much diversity as, as you would expect. Um, but I do think that is changing um, and we are getting more diversity here and more, more culture. Um, but they did notice that um, our Asian communities were pretty invisible. Um, even though they have uh, huge accomplishments and contributions to our state, um, they're pretty, uh, pretty hidden. Um, so they wanted to change that and they wanted everybody to come together as, as one and just to celebrate culture and diversity, not only with the Asian communities, but with the general public to let everybody know um, the different cultures that are here and what, what they have to offer. Um, so what a better way to get everyone together than a friendly competition. Um, so they decided on the ancient sport of dragon boating. Um, which is from uh, China, and I'll go into detail a little bit on the history of that, but um, one of the unique things about our festival is we actually brought dragon boating to Colorado. Um, dragon boating is actually pretty popular um, throughout the world. It's less popular in the U.S. right now, um, but I, I do think that um, dragon boating is going to be uh, much more popular in the coming years. Um, it's, it's definitely a niche sport here, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna blow up soon. Um, but on the first uh, first festival, we didn't know how many people were going to join. Um, we were kind of expecting maybe a thousand to five thousand, maybe tops. Um, but we ended up having over sixteen thousand people come to our one day festival, um, and we only had five food vendors. We had a handful of marketplace vendors and and just some race teams. Um, the food vendors ran out of food <laughs> um, throughout the day, even going back and forth, getting more food. Um, but it really just instilled in the um, founders that this was something that's needed here in Colorado and that Coloradans really really have like a thirst to learn more about um, different um, cultures and the diver diversity here. So um, we have actually grown every year um, since then. And last year in 2019, we had over 150,000 attendees. Um, and for the past uh, few years, we've been the largest Dragon Boat Festival in the US. Um, but in 2019, with that number, actually the largest Dragon Boat Festival in North America, um, which is pretty surprising because we're Colorado, we're landlocked, you wouldn't necessarily think that. <laughs> um, but I do think that um, some of the reasons for um, our success is is due to just what makes up the whole festival itself and um, we're not necessarily just dragon boat racing we are we're everything um i do think that you can come to our festival it's it's a two-day festival um and you probably won't even have time to see everything that we we have here because we just try and pack it full with as many opportunities as, as possible um, so we do have multiple different themes um, throughout the festival. If you um, can see, I have two um, words down there, um, edutainment and participation. Um, those are kind of our themes for uh, the festival. Edutainment is um, obviously educating through entertainment. Um, we actually have over 100 different performers um, throughout the two days of the festival. And all these performers are from local organizations um, and they uh, have a vast uh, variety of what they do. Um, we've had um, K-pop, we've had uh, breakdance fighting, we have a uh, mudra dance, which is like Indian Bollywood. Um, we have taiko drumming, which is um, uh, drumming from Japan. Um, and actually in that photo, you'll see that we actually have uh, become such a family here in the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival that the performers come together and they actually create fusion pieces of art. So um, Mudra and Taiko are two of our longest standing um, performers and they have come together and actually um, did a fusion dance. So dancing to Taiko drumming. Um, so India meets Japan, which is really, really um, exciting and cool. 
And that really kind of describes what we're trying to do um, with the festival in general is just to bring people together and to share our culture. Um, and participation is um, our uh, performers are encouraged to um, have everybody stand up and dance with them. Um, we have uh, multiple uh, martial art demos. Um, we we don't ask people to fight each other, but they can uh, do the moves um, along with the martial arts artists. And then also we have, uh, I think one of my favorite ones is an Oban dance, which is a Japanese circle dance that people can participate in. But the main idea there is just getting people to stand up and to participate in culture and not just see it um, so that they feel that they're a part of it. Um, two of our biggest themes um, for the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival is we highlight the um, zodiac the, of uh, the year and then also a uh, different community and culture or country um, and we highlight different ones each year. Um, so for the zodiac, um, that's actually uh, all those animals up there. I'm not sure if you guys know which one you are, but it's denoted by year, but it's actually denoted by the Lunar New Year um, instead of our calendar. And for instance, um, so I was born in 89, so I have always thought that I was a snake, um, but actually after um, being in this position and, and learning a little bit more, um, the Lunar New Year actually ends up being usually in late January, early February. Um, and so the year of uh, that I was born, um, Lunar New Year actually happened after my birthday. So I am actually a dragon. Um, so I just tell people I'm a snake dragon like Mushu. So pretty cool. Um, but if you don't know which zodiac you are, I do have a slide um, on the next one that will tell the years. Um, and so you can kind of figure that out. And if anybody has any interest in learning more about the zodiac, just let me know because I can send you a lot of material. Um, it's actually really interesting. Um, it's kind of kind of similar to astrology where it can kind of tell you what kind of person you are, um, which is really, really kind of unique and cool. Um, and then, uh, like I mentioned before, we highlight a different country each year. Um, last year in 2019, we uh, highlighted the country of Vietnam, um, which actually has one of the biggest uh, communities here in, in Denver at 44,000. Um, and they had a huge tent um, where they were able to showcase artifacts, art, um, clothing. They had a cyclo, which is um, a name for kind of like their, their rickshaw. Um, or, or pedicab kind of thing. Um, and then they also had a lot of food demonstrations, um, which was absolutely uh, amazing and very popular. So they had a pho tasting contest. Um, we had a bumbo whey eating contest, which means it was a, kind of like a spicier broth um, that you have to eat as fast as you can. Um, and then uh, spring roll making. Um, opportunity. So uh, food is another one of the big things here in Colorado um, and especially at our festival. I think that's one of the main reasons people come is to eat all the delicious food that we have there. We have a large marketplace, Asian marketplace, um, and then one of the things that we implemented in 2019 um, that we're definitely going to expand and um, work on um, highlighting a little bit more is um, our live art demos. Um, so that was one of the main things that we were pretty excited about. Um, we had uh, four local artists Artists come and, and join us and do um, live art at the festival, which is pretty um, inspiring and, and great in, in general because um, our festival figuratively and literally is the hottest festival of the summer. It, it literally is very hot and they were out there under tents um, painting masterpieces. Um, but it was a great opportunity for people to come and just talk to them and, and see uh, local artists here in, in Colorado. Um, but art and culture really go together. I don't think that you can have um, those separated. So art is a huge theme in, in Dragon Boat and it's just kind of sporadically um, dispersed throughout the festival. But I'll go into a little bit more on that. And then obviously, um, the biggest thing is the Colorado Dragon Boats. Um, if we wouldn't be the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival without dragon boating. Um, like I said, we brought uh, dragon boating to Colorado. Um, we have usually about 45 teams um, that uh, compete from day until night um, for, for dragon boating. And there's, there's two different styles of boats. There's a flag catcher and a Hong Kong style. And I'll go into a little more detail on that later. Um, but we actually own all of our boats. Um, so if anybody here is interested in even having a dragon boat team, all you need is 20 of your closest friends and we can get you on a boat. Um, it's a pretty unique experience. Um, here is the uh, slide with all the, the um, zodiac animals. Um, so I'll just kind of leave this up for, for a little, little bit so you can kind of find 
which animal you are. Um, again, if you have any questions or, or want to learn more about uh, your zodiac or the lunar new year, just let me know, um, and I can I can help you with that. Um, it is a twelve year um, cycle, so we are actually uh, two thousand twenty. Twenty twenty is actually the year of the rat, um, so we are actually on a new cycle of the zodiac, um, which is pretty exciting. And there there is actually a whole story behind this, um, where uh, it actually was a is kind of like a tortoise and the hare competition, but it was, a, it was a competition to see who could finish, um, go through the finish line first, um, and this is the order that it happened. Um, so the rat came first and um, the, the pig was, was last. Um, but uh, being last doesn't mean anything, it just uh, has, a, has a story um, that will kind of describe who you are. But again, if you have any questions, I can send you that material. Um, food. I have to talk about food because I love food. <laughs> um, the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival um, also has the largest Taste of Asia vendor area um, in all of Denver for that weekend. So we have over 15 different cuisines um, represented and we just have two huge food courts full of food. Um, actually to the point where we can't fit any more food vendors in our area um, even though we want to because there's um, one thing about sharing culture and diversity and, and um, Asian culture, we love food. We want to feed you. <laughs> we want you to be happy. Um, so we do have ample opportunities for people to come and taste any kind of cuisine that they can think of. Um, these are just some photos there and you can see that um, obviously majority of the food that we serve at the Dragon Boat Festival is Asian, uh, but we also have um, traditional uh, American. Um, we have pizza, we have uh, chicken tenders, things like that. And we've actually had some people come up and ask why we have American food at an Asian festival. And, and the answer is Asian people like pizza. We, <laughs> we like all kinds of food. Um, and we also just want to give people the opportunity to try different things, but um, we don't want anyone to starve. Again, Asian culture, we wanna feed you as much as possible. So we just have ample amounts of opportunity for you to kind of stuff your face with delicious food. Um, and again, that's one of the main reasons why people come to the Dragon Boat Festival is for um, the, the taste of different cuisines. We also have a really large Asian marketplace. Um, again, one of the largest in, in Denver for that weekend. So we allow um, mom and pop shops, um, craft, uh, people with crafts, uh, contractors, um, nonprofit organizations, community businesses. We allow um, people to come and just highlight what they have um, to, to sell, to highlight, uh, to explain their mission if they're a nonprofit. Um, but we have one of the largest Asian marketplaces where people can just come and buy all of their trinkets and just learn more about like the different fabrics, the different um, artifacts, everything like that when it comes to an Asian marketplace. Um, so it does kind of have that feel of, of an Asian marketplace where you just walk around and you get to explore tents um, with really cool things inside. Um, but if anybody here has even like an Etsy store or um, you have your own store, uh, we this is open to the, to the general public. And if anybody wants more information on how to have a booth um, at the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, just let me know. Um, but that's one of our, our biggest things where we do allow um, the opportunity to buy different unique things. Um, I think one of the biggest, uh, most popular ones is the umbrellas, um, the Asian umbrellas, uh, just because like I mentioned before, we're really, really sunny, really hot in um, Sloan's Lake, which is where we usually have the, the festival. And uh, yeah, you just see people walking around with a lot of different goodies. So that's one of our, our favorite things. Um, and then I think this is one of the main reasons why we're the largest Dragon Boat Festival in the country is because of all of our performances um, and our highlights of different cultures um, through performance and art. Um, so we have, like I mentioned, over 100 different um, performers throughout the uh, festival, and we have a bunch of uh, performances that are fusion as well. Um, so, and it ranges from, from children to adults um, and any local organization or even outside organization um, out of state is able to come and uh, kind of showcase their traditional contemporary modern dance, art, singing. We have a band stage. We have a 360 stage, which is for like martial arts and like um, more participation where people can come up and, and start dancing. And then we have a main performing arts stage as well. So we really just want to highlight um, all the different kinds of art music um, that's associated with our different communities. Uh, back in 2018, we actually, we highlighted the country of Mongolia and we actually had five uh, performers come from 
from the city of Ulaanbaatar, um, which is the capital city of uh, Mongolia. Um, and actually two of them were on Mongolia's Got Talent, which I didn't even know was a thing, but that was really, really awesome. Um, Mongolia uh, is actually known also for like throat singing. Um, so we had that um, as well. So it was, it was a really unique opportunity and it was an amazing opportunity for us to have people from Mongolia come here and we could highlight the city of Denver and in Colorado in general to people from different countries. Um, but I think that this is one of the main reasons why we have um, so many people at the festival. It's because not only can you see dragon boating, you can also see um, different performances and um, just really understand um, art and culture in a, in a different way, more interactive way. Um, and our festival is very family friendly. So as you can see, we, we also have, I think we have a group um, called the Bella Divas. And there is one, um, one of their groups is I think like ages, probably six to 10 and it's absolutely adorable um, where they just perform. Um, so we also, like I mentioned, have art at the festival. And this is something that we're really trying to highlight um, more and more. Um, like I said, in 2019, we had live art demos where we had local artists. Um, so on the bottom, you'll see we had Ratha Sok, we had Tian Tai, Casey Kawaguchi, and Jane, which is the Japanese art um, network, um, come and do live art demos for us. And this um, ranged from them creating masterpieces. Um, Ratha actually took some dragon boat paddles, put them all together, and then he does uh, spray paint art and he um, spray painted the front of it to make it look like a dragon, which was absolutely amazing. Um, Casey Kawaguchi, his, uh, he is fourth generation Japanese American. His uh, themes that he, he depicts are um, women's samurai. Um, and you've probably seen um, both of these artists, um, their artwork surrounding um, Metro Denver, Denver area. It's, it's really, really amazing. I think Casey has a few um, murals um, on buildings and then under bridges as well that you can go see. Um, and the Jane, um, the Japanese American um, net, uh, art network, actually had more interactive art pieces um, where it was a wooden um, block print where that you could help design um, and then also an interactive piece where they ask you questions and you answer with different colored ribbons. Um, but that is definitely one thing that we're trying to expand. We're actually working with um, the Denver Art Museum for, for the upcoming year to really make sure that we're highlighting all of our local artists. So if, if you guys are interested at all um, in being a part of this, please, please let me know. Um, we are still developing kind of the whole outline of it. Um, so depending on what kind of artwork that you would like to showcase or do, we, we can make it work for sure. Um, another thing that we've been doing since pretty much inception of the Dra Dragon Boat Festival is our poster design contest. Um, so as you can see um, along the top, those are some of our poster designs that we have. Um, this is open to the public um, every year. And pretty much what we do is we just give you a set of um, rules or guidelines for you to work with. So for instance, um, in 2019, it was Year of the Pig. So we ask that you highlight the zodiac, um, the country, that we're highlighting, um, just put in uh, the location, so Solon's Lake, Park in Denver, and then the date. Um, and then we just have you create whatever you think um, would be best. So I think that's one of the really unique um, parts of our uh, poster design contest is we get so many different styles and ideas of how to highlight the festival. Um, so for instance, in 2019, um, the, the pig poster actually was the one, one of our winners and our, our second place was actually the one in the other corner. Um, so they were given the same instructions, but came up with two very different ideas and both beautiful um, depictions for, for, a, for a poster and for, for marketing. Um, so then what we do with that poster design is we put that on all of our merchandise, our t-shirts. Um, we actually had um, the poster design on the back of a Coca-Cola truck because um, Coca-Cola is one of our sponsors. Um, but we really try and uh, promote and celebrate the um, artist as much as possible um, throughout the festival as well. So if any of you um, have an interest in doing the poster design contest, uh, just keep checking out our website. We'll have all of the details for hopefully 2021 when we can have an in-person festival again. Um, or just contact me and I can get you all that information. 
Um, so now I'll go into a little bit more about dragon boating, a little bit of the history. Um, like I mentioned, dragon boating obviously is the majority of uh, our festival. Um, dragon boat races happen on Sloan's Lake um, starting Saturday morning um, all the way until dusk on Saturday and it repeats on Sunday. Um, and we have had a lot of um, teams be created uh, here in Colorado. And these teams have, they're 20 years old now and they have gone from a more recreational team to uh, internationally competing teams, which is really exciting. Um, so I'll go a little bit into the history of dragon boating. Like I said, it is from um, China and it's over 2000 years old and it has a lot of tradition um, in it. So there was a poet um, and warrior and loyal aide to the emperor, uh, Chu Young. Um, and uh, back in the day, um, he was really close with the emperor and his kind of his advisor, um, but people were a little jealous of that. So they um, spread rumors and um, fake news and <laughs> got him kicked out of court. Um, so he was banished um, and wandered the countryside and he was, he was very upset um, because that was his passion in life was to, to be with the emperor. Um, but he was uh, so upset that he threw himself into the Milo River. Um, and uh, Chu Young himself had quite a few followers um, and people who loved him. And when they found out that he had thrown himself into the river, um, they went over there to try and save him. So they got on boats and they went out into the water. They paddled on the water. They banged drums and gongs to scare away fish. They threw food into the, to the river um, just because uh, they believed that um, the physical uh, appearance of your body um, in, in death in the in our world is how it will be depicted in the afterlife. So they were worried that since um, they knew that he had passed away that fish were getting to his body or maybe a water dragon or something like that. So they uh, made a lot of noise um, and just threw food into, into the water to try and um, get the fish away from him. Um, but ultimately, um, this is how dragon boating started is uh, there is a tradition made after that day that the fifth day of the fifth lunar month, um, people will go out into boats, paddle, um, bang drums, and really celebrate uh, Chu Young's life um, out there. So that's kind of how dragon boating started. And then since then, it's been made into a huge athletic competition. Um, there are two different styles of boats for um, competitions, and that is the flag catching boat and the Hong Kong style. Um, so they are both very similar where they are um, really long boats with a long and narrow flat bottom. The flat bottom tends to make it a little bit harder or a a little bit harder to keep it upright. So if you stand up on the boat, you most likely will flip. So a flat bottom does give a little bit of uh, extra challenge to, to the team. Um, so they are 20 meters long, about 65 feet, um, and they literally weigh a ton. Um, and we have uh, eight boats. Um, uh, for our organization, which makes it um, I can, I can attest it's a little bit hard to move <laughs> um, with them being that long and that, that heavy. Um, it's quite a challenge, but they are absolutely beautiful. Um, so they are uh, very beautifully decorated, um, but it's also pretty complex. Um, so we do have a prowl and, and a, a tail, and it's made out of teak wood carved as a dragon head. Um, so the stern, the back is a dragon's tail, so that's also detailed. Um, the body is painted with dragon scales, um, and then the prowl on the Hong Kong um, version, which is uh, the bottom photo there, is painted red because actually that head, if you see, it's pretty, um, it's smaller and it's very delicate. Um, so those heads don't actually go onto the boats until um, competition. So you don't really practice with them just because they are pretty del delicate when it comes to um, maneuvering them. And then up in the uh, corner, you'll see that that is the flag catching boat. So as you can see, the um, uh, the prow is a bit thicker and the head stays on um, and it's quite large. It's large enough actually for someone to lay on top um, because the flag catching version is uh, you actually have a flag catcher. So if someone literally lays on top of the head and catches a, a flag or gets a flag out of the water and that denotes how you win. Um, so the flag catching is a little more recreational. It's for people who um, aren't uh, super competitive um, but just want to have fun. Um, and the Hong Kong style, it's more sleek and it's faster. So it's actually meant more for um, competitive competition. Um, but we have both at the Dragon Boat Festival. And like I mentioned, um, I'm not sure how many people are on this call today, but we could all come together and 
create a team and go on to a dragon boat. Um, you just need 20 to 25 people on a team for both flag catching and Hong Kong style. Um, flag catching probably would be the best one to do if you haven't really been on a dragon boat. Hong Kong style, again, is, is a little more competitive. We do have uh, 250 meter races and 500 meter races. Um, the 250 meter is uh, for flag catching um, and we don't do 500 meters with flag catching just because the boat is so much bigger and heavier. Um, so it's, it's pretty exciting. And then we have the Colorado Dragon Boat Festival the last weekend in July. Um, it's at Sloan's Lake. Um, traditionally, it's, it's been there every year. And then this is a wonderful team bonding um, opportunity. So either you can get a bunch of your friends together. If your company is looking for team building activities, this is a wonderful opportunity. It's a very niche um, sport. Um, we're pretty much the only, only festival organization that can get you out on a dragon boat. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty unique and fun. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, kind of dragon boning in a nutshell. Um, and I know I've been talking for, for a while here. I'll just go into a little bit of detail on our other programs. Uh, but uh, also, if anybody has any questions regarding dragon boating, if you want to get on a team, you want to um, get associated with a team that's out there, let me know. I'll, I'll get you all that information. Um, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit briefly about the Colorado Dragon Film Festival. Um, this is another one of our programs that started five years ago. Um, so we are actually the only all Asian and Asian American film festival in Colorado, which we're really proud of. Um, and we just showcase and highlight um, uh, Asian and Asian American directors, um, films, everything like that. Uh, upcoming in 2021, um, March 2021, we are in partnership with Denver Film. We will be hosting a um, three-day, most likely three-day um, film festival. Uh, we most likely will have to go online um, just due to COVID, um, so that's a little bit new, but I mean with movies and, and film festivals, that kind of works hand in hand. Um, our theme for uh, this upcoming year is representation, um, so we really just want to make sure that we represent um, our culture on the, on the big screen and people are able to see that. Um, another program that we have is the AAPI Emerging Leaders Program that will most likely happen again in the fall of 2021, um, ages 21 to 35, and this is a specific leadership program that helps you not only in your career but in your personal life, and it does kind of um, include what your culture, um, how your culture affects you in, in the workplace, and it's, it's really amazing. We have quite a few graduates who just speak um, so highly of it, and it's an absolutely free program. Um, so if anybody here is interested in this program, please let me know. Um, it's uh, three workshops, so a three-month um, timeline, but uh, you just meet for a full day once a month um, with our contractor, uh, Aaron Yoshimura, who is, does absolutely amazing um, with the leadership development, and it's, 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 I would highly recommend it. Um, and then I'm just going to do a quick plug here. Um, because we weren't able to do the 2020 in-person Colorado Dragon Boat Festival, um, we have decided to do a hashtag 20 and 20 and 20 fundraiser and virtual experience. Um, so 2020 would have been our 20th anniversary. And we are hoping um, and looking to raise 20,000 this year um, to kind of just help us sustain our organization to ensure that we're able to host the festival next year, hopefully, um, when we can have in-person festivals. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. So as most people know who are involved in nonprofits. Our budget is is super lean and tight, um, and any extra help um, can can help us greatly. So we are looking to to um, raise a good amount um, this year to help us. And then, in order to keep our uh, mission and vision, we want to um, promote and highlight as many um, performers and organizations as possible. So we're doing a virtual experience, and that is going to be on October 3rd. Um, and it's gonna be hosted on Denver Film's uh, new platform. So all you have to do is click on that link and you can register, and it's a free event. Um, no, no charge, just a, just a donation of maybe $20 to go towards our, our fundraiser. But um, other than that, it's, it's, it's free. Um, and I do recommend um, registering because then they'll send you uh, reminders. And I know October 3rd is still kind of a ways away, but it'll give you um, updates on, on when we're having it, ha having it happen. Um, the performances is probably gonna be about two, two and a half hours um, of performances. But the unique thing with the Denver Films new platform is that you can start at any time that you want. You can pause it, you can rewind, you can forward. It's absolutely amazing. It's the world is your oyster when it comes to our virtual experience. Um, but you'll be able to see a lot of the performers that you usually see at the Dragon Boat Festival. And then if you're interested in helping us keep the boats afloat, um, you can donate to our hashtag 20 and 2020 campaign. The link um, below is where our Colorado Gives um, 
fundraising pages. Again, anything helps um, during this time. And then I also want to do a, a quick shout out on um, this uh, logo right here. Um, and then also, obviously, this logo here um, was actually designed by Eleanor Harris, who is a part of your group. And it is um, absolutely beautiful. And we, we love it. So thank you so much for, for creating that um, logo for us, Eleanor. Um, and, and just uh, mentioning, we have a lot of opportunity for people who are looking to um, help us with graphic design or art or anything like that. We are truly a nonprofit. Um, I am the executive director for the organization and currently I am the only employee <laughs> for the organization. So I run everything so I can always use extra help if anybody is willing and excited to, uh, to help volunteer. That is what um, runs our organization, our volunteers. I think we have 400 on the, the day of the event. Um, it's our dragon family and everyone comes together just to help. Um, but sorry, I know I spoke for, for a while there. Um, I could talk for a lot longer. I, I do love this organization. Um, but this is my contact. I'm sure it was sent out earlier. If you have any questions, um, I'd love to answer them. Thank you, Sarah. I think I can't keep going for another hour. It's like so <laughs> interesting. There are so many things to say. So first of all, I want to say like this was really interesting for me personal and I'm sure our attendee uh, like it too. And uh, I would love to do an uh, AIGA team. So for anyone who's interested, uh, send me an email to me or Sam or anyone in the IJ group and uh, we are gonna follow up. I think this is really cool and it would be really fun. In, uh, in regard of that, like do people have to be Asian or like some, some Asian to participate or is like free for anyone? Yeah, um, so the festival is, is free for anyone. If you do want to create a team, um, there is a uh, registration um, fee for the team just to help us uh, maintain the boats, but uh, you can be of any ethnicity, um, absolutely. It's just our, our way of um, giving people the opportunity to try dragon boating, so don't have to be Asian. So I saw that people mentioned that in the chat. So if anyone wanna join me, I would definitely love to do that. <laughs> it's really fun. I will say, um, I feel like I'm somewhat athletic and then I got on a dragon boat for the first time and I was sore for like five days after. It was it's a very full body workout. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> I'm all in. So we have our first question from James and if anyone has question, please go on the Q&A chat and write them there. And he said, thank you for your presentation, the background on your family. It was very interesting. Do participants build their own boats or does the festival own and assign them to the teams? Yeah, so um, we actually get that question quite quite a bit. We actually own boats um, that we rent out to the team. So no need to make your own boat, but I've always told people if you want to make your own boat and then donate it to us, please do. Um, Dragon boats are actually, uh, quite hefty, like I said, they're 70 feet long, a ton in weight, um, and then actually each dragon boat costs about $20,000. So um, no worries, you don't have to drop that much money on a boat, we have them for you. So I have another question because you were talking a lot about the uh, zodiac and like all the signs, and I'm a little bit into that as well. So why the zodiac and all the signs is like it's very important topic for like the Asian community because I saw also you is the main theme of the poster mm -hmm. why is that so important and uh, what can you tell us about that yeah yeah so um lunar uh the lunar calendar is um the calendar that most um Asian countries kind of um, go by. Um, and it's just steeped in a lot of tradition. So I think that's one of the main reasons why we highlight that. Um, and also each year it, uh, is depicted by the animal zodiac and it kind of forecasts what that year is going to be. Um, so I think that is uh, one of the reasons why we highlight that so much. And then also um, Lunar New Year, I think I mentioned um, at the beginning of the year, usually end of January, early February, um, depending on the lunar um, uh, phase. Uh, is um, one of the biggest uh, celebrations in Asian cult culture, um, especially in, in uh, China, uh, Chinese New Year. Um, so I think we are just trying to also highlight that tradition as well um, with the Zodiac. 
I might send you an email about that because uh, I kind of want to know more. I know I'm a dog sign in the Asian zodiac, but I'm always happy to like learn more and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I, I highly recommend learning more about it. <laughs>